What's up, Belmont family? It's Mr. O'Connell here for day one of the shutdown for 2020. Miss you guys a lot, but really excited that I can finally get my YouTube channel off the ground. Today, I've got four things that I'm going to show you. The first thing is going to be a math drill you can do to keep those math facts fresh in your head. The second thing is going to be a read aloud. The third thing is going to be an awesome science experiment that shows you why you need to wash your hands to avoid COVID-19. And then the fourth thing is going to be some interesting information and some helpful information to make sure that you and your family are safe through the hey. break. For our multiplication chance, we're going to practice a skill. We're going to put our hands up like this. And then each time we say a number, we will put up a finger. For the twos, it's pretty straightforward, just counting by twos. So we put our hands up like this. Twos, here we go. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Are you ready to time some more? Here we go. Let's do it together. Hands up. Twos. Here we go. 2, 4, 6, 8. Who do you appreciate? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Are you ready to chant some more? Now the fives are pretty straightforward too. You're just counting by fives. You throw your fingers up. Fives, here we go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Take a deep breath. Here we go, nice and slow. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Take a deep breath. All right, you try one time by yourself. I'll throw my fingers up. Sixty. Tens, tens are really easy. You just count by tens with claps after every two. Here we go. Hands up. Tens. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Now you try it with me. Here we go. Hands up. Counting by tens. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Fives and tens, twos first. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Are you ready to time some more? Now the fives, hands up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Take a deep breath. And now the tens, here we go. Hands up. Take it slow. 10, 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. All right, that's it for our math chance. Tomorrow we're going to try the threes, so make sure you're ready. Three, six, nines. Here we go. Everything will be fine. All right, our next book is our book that we're going to read is called Spy School. It's by an author named Stuart Gibbs. Here we go. Chapter one Recruitment. Ripley Residence, 2107 Mockingbird Road, Vienna, Virginia, January 16th. Hello, Ben, said the man in my living room. My name is Alexander Hale. I work for the CIA. And just like that, my life became interesting. It hadn't been up until that day. Not by a long shot. That day had been a prime example day. 4,583, seven months into the 12th year of my mundane existence. I had dragged myself out of bed, eaten breakfast, gone to middle school, been bored at class, stared at girls I was too embarrassed to talk to, had lunch, slogged through gym, fallen asleep in math, been harassed by Dirk the Jerk, taken the bus home, and found a man in a tuxedo standing, sitting on the couch. I didn't doubt that he was a spy for a second. Alexander Hale looked exactly like I always imagined a spy would. A tiny bit older, perhaps maybe 50, but still smooth and debonair. He had a small scar on his chin from a bullet, I guessed, or maybe something more exotic like a crossbow. There was something very James Bond about him. I could imagine he'd been in a car chase on the way over and shot the bad guys without even swe sweating. My parents weren't home. They never were when I got back from school. Alexander had obviously let himself in. The photo albums from my family vacation to Virginia Beach sat upon the coffee table before him. Am I in trouble? I asked. Alexander laughed. For what? You've never done anything wrong in your whole life. 
unless you count the time you spilled dirt down its Pepsi with Xlac. And frankly, that kid was asking for it. My eyes widened in surprise. How did you know that? I'm a spy. It's my job to know things. Do you have anything to drink? Uh, sure. My mind quickly cataloged every beverage in the house. Although I had no idea what this man was doing there, I found myself desperately wanting to impress him. My folks have all kinds of stuff. What would you like? A martini? Alexander laughed again. This isn't the movies, kid. I'm on the clock. I blushed, feeling foolish. Oh, right, water? I was thinking more like an energy drink, something with electric lights, just in case I need to leap into action. I had to ditch some undesirables on my way over here. Undesirables? I tried to sound cool as though I discuss things like this every day. What sort of... I'm afraid that information is classified. Of course. Would you like some Gatorade? That would be grand. I headed to the kitchen. Alexander followed. The agency's had its eye on you for some time. I paused, surprised, the refrigerator door half open. Why? For starters, you asked us to. I did? When? How many times have you accessed our website? Uh, 728, I said. Alexander looked the tiniest bit intrigued. That's exactly right. Usually you merely play the game on the kids' page, at which you performed at very well, by the way, but you've also browsed the employment and internship pages with some regularity. Ergo, you're thinking about becoming a spy. And when you express an interest in the CIA, the CIA express an interest in you. Alexander pulled a thick envelope. We've been impressed. The envelope was marked to be hand delivered only to Mr. Benjamin Ripley. There were three security seals on it, one of which required a knife to open. Inside was a thick wad of paper. The first page had only one sentence. Destroy these documents immediately after reading. The second page began. Dear Mr. Ripley, it is my great privilege to accept you to the Academy of Espionage of the Central Intelligence Agency effective immediately. I set the letter down, stunned, thrilled, and confused. My whole life. All I'd wanted to do was become a spy, and yet... You think it's a joke, he said, reading my mind. Well, yes, I've never heard of the CIA's Academy of Espionage. That's because it's top secret. But I assure you, it exists. I graduated from there myself. A fine institution dedicated to creating the agents of tomorrow. Congratulations! Alexander raised his glass of Gatorade and gave me a blinding smile. I clinked glasses with him. He waited for me to drink some of mine before downing his, which I figured was a habit you got of a lifetime of people trying to poison you. I looked at my reflection in the microwave, and doubt descended on me. It didn't seem possible that the same organization had selected me. Alexander was handsome, athletic, sophisticated, and cool. I wasn't. How could I be qualified to keep the world safe for democracy when I'd been shaken down from my lunch money three times alone that week? But how... Did you get into the academy when you didn't even apply? Yes. Applications merely provide opportunities for you to tell the institution you're applying to about yourself. The CIA already has all the information it needs. Alexander removed a small handheld computer from his po pocket and consulted it. For example, you're a straight-A student who speaks three languages and has level 16 math skills. What does that mean? What's 98,261 times 147? 14,444,367. I didn't have time to think about it. I have a gift for mathematics, and as a result, an uncanny ability to know exactly what time it is, although for much of my life, I hadn't realized this was special. I thought everyone could do complex arithmetic equations in their heads, or instantly calculate how many days, weeks, or minutes they'd been alive. I was 3,832 days old when I found out otherwise. That's level 16. According to our files, you also ace the STIQ exams, have a strong aptitude for electronics, and harbor a severe crush on a Miss Elizabeth Pasternak, although sadly, she does not know you exist. I'd assumed as much about that. Elizabeth, but it still hurt to be confirmed. By the CIA, no less. So I tried to divert attentions. Stick exams? I don't remember taking those. You wouldn't. You didn't even know you were taking them. Standardized test inserted questions. S-T-I-Q. The CIA places them in every secret standardized test to assess potential espionage aptitude. You've gotten everyone right since you were in third grade. You insert your own questions into standardized tests? Does the Department of Education know about that? I doubt it. They don't know much of anything about education. Alexander sat his empty glass in the sink and rubbed his hands. Well, enough chit-chat. Let's get you packed. You have a busy afternoon ahead. Wait, you mean we're going now? 
Alexander turned back to me already halfway to the stairs. You scored a 99.9th percentile of the STIQs. What part of effective immediately do you not understand? I stammered a bit. There was a hundred questions. I, um, well, well, why am I packing? How far away is this academy? Oh, not far away at all. Just across the Potomac in D.C. But becoming a spy is a full-time job, so all students are required to live on campus. Your training lasts six years, starting in the equivalent of seventh grade and going through twelfth. You'll be in the first year, obviously. And with that, he ran up the steps to my room. When I got there 20 seconds later, he already had my suitcase open and was casting a disdainful eye. You don't have a single decent suit, he said. Um, is the academy on a different schedule than normal schools, I asked? No. Then why are they accepting me now? It's the middle of the school year. I pointed to the four inches of fresh snow plowed on my windowsill. For the first time since I'd met him, Alexander Hale appeared at a loss for words. It didn't last long, in less than a second, as though something he wanted to say but didn't. Uh, there was a sudden opening. Someone quit? Mm, flunked out. Your name was next on the list. Do you have any weapons? In retrospect, I realized the question was designed to distract me. Um, I have a slingshot. Slingshots are for squirrels. We don't fight squirrels in the CIA. I meant real weapons. Guns. Knives. Nunchucks. No. Alexander shook his head slightly, as though disappointed. Well, it's no matter. The school armory can loan you some in the meantime. I suppose this will suffice. He took out a dusty old tennis racket from the closet. Just in case there's trouble, you know. For the first time, it occurred to me that Alexander might be armed. There was a slight bulge in his tuxedo, right below his left armpit, which I realized now was a gun. In that moment, the entire encounter with him, which had been strange and exciting, now became a little bit scary as well. Maybe before I make any big decisions, I should talk to my parents, I said. Out of the question! The existence of the Academy is classified! No one is to know you are attending. Not your parents. Not your best friends. Not even Elizabeth Pasternak. No one, as far as they're concerned. You'll be going to St. Smithing Science Academy for boys and girls. A science academy, I said. I'll be training to save the world, but everybody's going to think I'm a dork. I'm pretty sure everyone thinks you're a dork now. <laughs> Oof. They'll think I'm an even bigger dork. He raised an eyebrow. I'm not sure that's possible. But being an elite operative demands sacrifice. This is only the beginning. Your training won't be easy. And if you succeed, your life won't be easy. A lot of people can't hack it. So if you want to back out, this is your chance. I assume this was the final test. The last step in my recruitment. A chance to prove that I wouldn't be dissuaded from the threat of hard work and tough times ahead. It wasn't. Alexander was just being honest with me. But I was too caught up in the excitement to notice. I wanted to be just like Alexander Hale. I wanted to be suave and debonair. I wanted to let myself in to people's homes with a gun casually tucked in my tuxedo. I wanted to ditch undesirables, keep the world safe, and impress the heck out of Elizabeth Pasternak. I wouldn't have even minded a rakish crowbow... Crow... Crow... crow I, know. I wouldn't have even minded a rakish crossbow scar on my chin. And so I stared back into his steel gray eyes and made the worst decision of my life. I'm in, I said. Oh. Okay, what we have here is a highly scientific model of the coronavirus that I created in my kitchen using water and spices. And if you look in it, you can see that the spice is coronavirus and the water is the air and it's bouncing around. And my daughter Grace is gonna put her finger in there. Go ahead, put it in. Yep, rub it around. All right, did you get any coronavirus on your finger? Oh no, it's gonna go in your mouth and make you sick and spread to everybody you love. That's terrible. Well, I'm gonna ask you to go wash your finger off and put some soap on it. All right, is the hand clean? Mm -hmm. All right, now I got something I need you to do. I'm gonna give you a tiny little bit of soap, just a little bit of soap. And you're gonna put it on your finger, rub it around on your finger. All right, and now put it right down in the middle of, and see what happens. Yeah, you see that? Now pull your finger out. Pull your finger out. You got any coronavirus on it? Nothing at all. That's because the soap pushes away the stuff on the water and helps you to get that stuff down the drain and away from your mouth. So remember, it's important to wash your hands for 20 seconds using warm water and soap so that you can stay safe anytime you're about to eat or coming in from outside, all right? Like I promised, I got one more announcement. That's for if anybody wants to get breakfast or lunch, you can always go to the school. Baby Belmont's giving it out every day from 10 to 12. If you wanna get breakfast or lunch, you can just walk on down to Baby Belmont by yourself or by with your parents, grab some breakfast, grab some lunch, and then have a good day. So wake up early and get down there. Hope everybody's doing well. See you guys in two weeks, very excited. Take care of yourselves, wash your hands, read a book, practice your math facts, do your work packets. 
and uh, we'll see you back at Belmont as soon as possible.